Welcome to the course on computer architecture, which is CS305 at IIT Bombay. This lecture will provide a 10,000 feet view of what computer architecture is and why should we study computer architecture. So before we define what exactly computer architecture is, let's understand what's a computer. So in today's world, a computer can be your smartphone, your laptop, your desktop, iPad, or a data center from Google or a supercomputer. Now in this slide, I'm showing some of the famous architectures from India. Uh, some of you uh, may have visited uh, these places, but how did this relate to the field of computer architecture? So let's delay it to the last lecture, uh, to the end of the semester and at that time, we'll have our own definitions of computer architecture. So till then, let's understand what exactly computer architecture is. So this course is a combination of uh, theory and lab. CS305 is a theory and CS341 is a lab. And in this course, we will cover uh, various things. So this slide shows uh, various images. One is from Intel G1 server, Intel Core i7, that's there in your laptop, a Qualcomm processor, uh, and a GPU from NVIDIA, and a TPU from Google. And finally, this is not a processor, this is something called a memory or DIMM. So in this course, we'll try to understand how these images or chips or processors or memory work, and why they work the way they work. So historically, computer architects have been uh, doing the heavy lifting uh, so that the life of uh, a software programmer will be easy. Uh, so if we look at uh, the computing stack, uh, let's understand uh, this uh, pyramid. So we have problems for which we have algorithms and uh, that you can uh, write using various programming languages. The compiler will compile and the operating system will uh, load it, run it on your computer. And uh, the bottom of the stack is computer architecture where your CS305 uh, comes in. So uh, you can see uh, I have put the Intel processors uh, and the takeaway from this slide is we'll try to understand how uh, the current processors or memory or different kind of processing units like uh, GPUs and TPUs help in uh, executing the modern applications. So a recent trend uh, is that most of the software companies are now uh, building their own uh, processor or chips. So you can find uh, Amazon here, a Facebook, a Google, and Microsoft and uh, some of the famous AI startups, uh, some 20 plus in the last few years. So it shows that uh, apart from the conventional companies like Intel, AMD, ARM, IBM, and many others, there are all the big uh, software companies. Now they are getting into this particular field. So it's an exciting time to uh, study this uh, course on computer architecture. So let's get started. Uh, so since 1946, all the computers have uh, five components. Uh, you can see there are four boxes. One is processor that processes uh, your program. It has uh, a control and data path. Uh, we will jump into it in the detail later. And then there is memory and then there is your IO. So the IO in today's world uh, can be your touch screen and we will see how all of these components interact with each other. So a computer architecture designs are mostly driven by various things, uh, different entities in the system stack like operating system, programming language, compiler, uh, and many others. And at the same time, uh, new applications. So for example, uh, how does computer architecture change with the new set of workloads or new set of uh, domain application domains that are coming in for example uh, computer vision for example your uh, deep learning workloads and whatever right 
and at the same time uh, technology also drive computer architecture so uh, i will delay uh, describing or defining this word technology uh, and and uh, we'll go into the details later and uh, it also takes care of history like how exactly uh, the processors have been designed in the past and what can be done or what can be learned from the designs to build better processors or memory or chips so at this point you should ask why study this course yeah it's a compulsory course uh, at the undergraduate level but if you pause for a bit you will find that computer architecture is everywhere the moment you wake up till you hit the bed uh, you will find that you are interacting with various components of computer architecture in your day-to-day -day life of course it's exciting and it is the enabler for all the other areas so some of the hot topics that uh, you must have been aware of they are kind of uh, hot topics because of uh, computer architecture because it provides the computing uh, power for various other areas because of which uh, they are what they are and finally it will make you a better programmer because you will know what exactly is hap happening inside your processor or your computer system so it's a good time to take this course and uh, I, I hope uh, you will learn a lot and finally uh, you'll be excited uh, about learning various principles and designs that are driving computer architecture so uh, compared to the previous courses where abstraction may be an essential tool uh in this lecture or in this course rather we will try to break the abstraction so abstraction is good if you don't care about the performance of underlying entities so let, let me explain it uh, with an example so abstraction gives you what but it doesn't explain how and why so for example if i ask you a question how many of you can drive a bike the answer will be 150 plus and but if i ask how many of you know how a bike works it may not be 150. so similarly if i ask you how many of you use a computer come on all of them but if i ask how many of you know how a computer works then the number will be pretty small so in this course, we will try to break all the abstraction layers and try to understand what's happening uh, inside the chips and we'll try to break it and understand why they are designed the way they are designed. So let's get started uh, one step at a time. So we'll first look into what is called a CPU or central processing unit. Uh, Typical example will be Intel processors in your laptop or servers. And the next few lectures will be uh, as a top down approach. We will move from software or as a software programmer, what can you do and how can you interact with the processor? We'll jump into a new language called the language of instructions, which has a vocabulary called instruction set and which is driven by instruction set architecture or called ISA. So there are many ISAs in the market, in the industry, uh, x86, ARM, RISC-V, and MIPS. There are many others. But in this course, we will use MIPS. So MIPS is a pretty simple yet expressive ISA. Uh, the basic principles that uh, drive I, uh, this MIPS ISA are similar to some of the current ISAs which are there in the mobile processor, for example, ARM. And, uh, most of the principles you will find similar to other ISAs also. It is still in use today in uh, embedded devices and uh, some of the routers and modems. So as I mentioned one step at a time, so it's not important to understand all the complexity in one go, but rather you will try to understand uh, one at a time. So this ISA actually provides you an abstraction it, it uh, provides you an interface between the hardware and software so that as a programmer you are not worried about the intricacies of the hardware you don't need to know what exactly is happening in your processor or memory so as i mentioned in this course we will break the abstraction layers and we will break the abstraction barriers so we will break isa so that will be the first uh, few set of lectures 
So to understand the abstraction here, uh, uh, let's take an example of a simple arithmetic statement from your uh, famous program Glavi. Let's see when that gets com uh, compiled, uh, it generates something of this sort, which says you add something. And instead of your variables name ABC, it does something dollar one dollar two dollar three so we'll understand what are these later and finally uh, there is an assembler that converts that particular uh, assembly language which is driven by an isa to something called a machine language which is a language of zeros and ones so finally your a equal to b plus c looks something like this so the next few set of lectures will be on the assembly language and for your MIPS I say. So to understand uh, this abstraction further, I'm showing here what is called the memory and there is a term called registers and this code is nothing but your processor. So in the previous slide, I showed you that uh, we need two operands B and C and the summation of b and c will be stored in a so these operands it can be there in registers which are fast but uh, the size of registers are pretty limited the capacity is limited or it can be in memory uh, where you have to send a request to memory saying give me the operand so that i will perform an addition operation so if we go a bit detailed so registers are closer to processor uh, you can say that it take one unit of time and if we compare that with the memory the memory takes almost uh, 100 times as compared to the register another uh, key takeaway is the registers are limited in nature so you don't have gbs of registers so you can't store all the data that you need for your program so you have to use most of them in memory and some of them in register. So we'll see how we can do this and uh, how a processor can get all the data that it uh, demands uh, from registers or memory. So with this, I will stop uh, this lecture zero. And in the next lecture, we'll uh, jump into the MIFS instructions.